of the effects of opium in lowness of spirits by george young 1692 to 1757 from a treatise on opium founded upon practical observations published in 1753 this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org Section 22 of the Effects of Opium in Lowness of Spirits To some, opium gives a flow of spirits, after once they are accustomed to it, and they find them proportionally depressed after its influence is over. I saw one physical patient who, by the exhilarating quality of opium, would sing songs and despise death but ere twenty-four hours were elapsed he would behave more like a true penitent he fancied he was dying and wanted the assistance of a clergyman these two opposite characters he often alternately assumed and when a clergyman could not be got he was so miserable from excessive languor that he repeated his dose of opium before the usual time which set his mind at ease before the other consolation could arrive Mrs. C.D. died of a consumption after fifteen months' illness. She used no opium till within three weeks of her death. Her diet had been cool and abstemious from the beginning, which probably preserved her so long, for she had been of a weakly disposition and a bad habit of body a great while. I found her pulse was slow and languid, and she complained of great lassitude, so that life became a burden to her. A dose of opium relieved her so much that she regretted she had not begun taking it sooner. She said it was a blessed medicine for the present relief it gave, though it should do no more good. When the effects of opium ceased, her languor returned, and the dose was renewed. Some advised her not to indulge herself in the use of opium. She answered that she would take it, though she was certain it would hasten her death for it was better to have one easy death if it could be had than suffer an hundred of the miserable kind for such she reckoned every fit of languor here i had a most evident instance of the power of opium in giving a flow of spirits when they were reduced to the lowest ebb it was in the incurable stage of the disease when advanced beyond all hopes and when the cough seemed abated merely through a defect of the vis vitae no wine or cordial would serve the purpose in the present case because they disagreed with her stomach mrs r had been long accustomed to liquid laudanum and took betwixt three and four hundred drops a day without it she was greatly depressed with a kind of melancholy and with it behaved like one in liquor being very loquacious and apparently very happy but the best proof we have of this property of opium is the effect it produces among the turks there a whole nation or a great part of them are accustomed to take opium freely and when the practice is become habitual it loses its soporific quality and is used to give courage in the day of battle if a long and confirmed habit of taking opium can divest it of its narcotic quality it will probably be found a valuable drug in some cases wherein it is often dangerous by being too apt to cause sleep a certain surgeon always took some opium and gave it likewise to his patient when he had any considerable operation to perform but i must own that a glass of generous wine had always a better effect upon me when i wanted to excite courage the reason why it might not succeed with me might be that i had not been accustomed to take it except when indisposed and as i hinted before it is the habitual use of it that renders it ineffectual in promoting sleep at least i can be positive that it does not give a flow of spirits to every one alike and yet we are told that the turks doubt no more of its power to exhilarate and give courage than we do of its soporific quality i have at present one patient who has used it for twelve years 
he never finds that it disposes him to sleep at all, though he takes four teaspoonfuls every day of the liquid laudanum. Some years ago, a sailor came from the East Indies with a very ill habit of body after drinking rat punch for some years. He had a large abscess in his thigh, which I was in hopes would have cured him. But after it broke and had almost suffocated all in the room with the smell, he found his spirits in two days so depressed that he despaired of recovery. He told me that he perceived nature gradually sinking since the opening of the abscess, for which I gave him twenty-five drops of liquid laudanum. The next morning he told me he was in heaven, and indeed the change which that single dose had made upon him in one night was astonishing, for his lips and cheeks recovered their red color, his eyes, which before were sunk and lifeless, were now sparkling and brisk. This was a remarkable instance of the effect of opium in giving courage and curing a languor or excessive weariness. He perfectly recovered without any other medicine, and became so much prejudiced in its favor that he swore it should go through the world with him, and not but death should part them. Had he taken the opium while the separation was advancing, the inflammation and opium would have counteracted each other, the one tending to hinder, the other to promote sleep. The opium would have closed his eyes, then immediately the inflammation would have made him moan till he awakened with a violent start out of a terrible dream. Thus he would have continued restless betwixt sleeping and waking. So different are the effects of opium in the same person under different circumstances. End of, of the Effects of Opium in Lowness of Spirits by George Young, 1692-1757